Manu is responsible for the preparation and implementation of sourcing strategies in line with the business targets and procurement objectives. Okay, thank you, Manu, for joining our session today. We may take the floor now. Thank you, Vera, for your presentation. And well, good morning, Europe. Good afternoon in, in China. Let me share with you the presentation. Okay. I guess you can see my presentation in a yes. way. Yes, perfect. Okay. So, uh, well, thank you very much to my colleagues for, for their presentation. And thank you, Solar B, you know, for, for inviting me to this webinar. Uh, I would like to talk about the challenge that uh, we are facing in the solar, solar sector in Spain after this uh, environmental permit that we received during last month and yeah, which are likely to lead an over demand from contractors, suppliers and other key players in, in the market. Regarding the current situation in Spain, I'm not going to go much deeper into uh, it as Josephine uh, particularly has already commented on this aspect. And I would like to, to focus uh, a little more on the procurement side. Uh, this is where I have uh, the most knowledge. Uh, to put this in context, uh, well, you can see this graph uh, where you, well, where we can see that uh, between some years uh, till 2019, the installed capacity was practically, practically zero. And the turning point occurred in 2019, where almost four gigawatts were installed. The trend continued in 2020 and 2021 with around three gigawatts each year. And we see in 2022 how the install capacity increased to almost five gigawatts. So far, so far the, the, process, the process of getting permits from the administration has, be, has been very slow in Spain, as you already know if you are working in this country. But even so, at the end of last year, uh, well, we reached the, uh, the capacity, our capacity increase to uh, almost 20 gigawatts. So it's not too bad. What is clear is that a country like Spain, which uh, has always been energy dependent, has great potential to become a major player in the energy production in, in Europe. Because we have the natural resources and we cannot repeat the past that we made in the the mistakes that we made in the past so if we look at the different regions of spain we can see that there are many differences that we need to solve and there are regions that have made a huge commitment uh, to photovoltaic energy especially those regions that uh, are located at the south because they have a greater production capacity but there are others that for various reasons, whether political or social, are lagging behind the rise to install capacity in the regions with all that this entails. In addition, this generates the, re the rejection of those uh, regions that are more involved and are affected by this plan in the environment and landscape. Hence, the emergence of so social movements against this type of power plants, uh, they don't know what they do not want to, to have all the energy production of the whole country concentrated in the regions. On the other hand, the political sign that governs in each, in each uh, region directly affects the permits approved. As the project less than 50 megawatts pass directly to the, uh, through the regional governments, and those that are uh, uh, over 50 megawatts are, go directly to the central government. And what we do in Aquila to avoid this, uh, the energy transition must be done hand in hand with the local communities. We seek a relationship with the territory based on the creation of shared value. In addition to generating jobs and tech and taxes, we help to retain workers through the training. And furthermore, we integrate our facilities into the natu natural and social environment. 
And well, after talking about the current situation, I would like to comment on the challenge that the lie ahead uh, for those of us working in the photovoltaic sector in Spain. We have the capital because there are a lot of uh, investors interested in the country. We have the sun, it is the main resources, but it seems that we are going to lack uh, resources in the short term. I mean, everything, uh, people, machinery, labor, all of us, uh, after this uh, bulk permitting, we are going to face uh, this situation. So what is coming after, uh, well, already commented by Josephine, um, we have already seen that there was a general approval uh, at the beginning of the year for the environmental permits. We are always waiting for the last moment instead of having done things in an orderly way, but this is our way to do the things, unfortunately. Uh, my estimation was uh, 50 gigawatts. Uh, Josephine said at least 30, but uh, well, I'm uh, adding the 21 gigawatt that coming from the central government, from Viteco, and it's uh, calculated at uh, around 29 gigawatts from the regional government. So we have a real challenge. What this means is that sorry, excluding those projects that are not viable, either due to the environmental permit resolution, having to vary lines, loss of capacity, or for already any other reasons, the rest of the main players in the market will have to do everything possible to obtain the final authorization to operate by 25 of June of 2025, as is stipulated in the Royal Decree. Construction over demanded is warranted. And companies like mine uh, that, uh, manage, uh, that we are managing a lot of megawatts, we are already planning how to execute the, our projects on time and with the right quality. That is the other point that we need to focus. Let's hope that there will be sanity and that reasonable deadlines will be set in order to build quality projects. Because if not, after this um, period, we are going to, to be stuck in the construction. And what, the, what are our main challenges for, for, for the procurement departments? Basic, basically, it's to ensure that our projects are built on time and with the required quality. It's uh, our main target. However, we see that the EPC contractor are in a more favorable situa situation than ever, as there are more requests than capacity to deliver. The EPC contractor market is the atomicide market, which has suffered a lot in recent years with uh, very low margins and assuming most of the risks of the uh, projects, to which we had very limited project execution due to the royal decree and something that we are already suffering from all the pyramid in the sector is uh, the, la the lack of professional in the sector, which means that there is a high turnover between the different uh, companies. Furthermore, specialized machinery as pile drivers will be a scarce resource, and many of the APC contractors have already started to buy or hire uh, them so as not to be dependent as, uh, on their subcontractors. Currently, the estimation of the Spanish CPC market is around 7, 10 gigawatts per year. And as I mentioned earlier, we expect uh, around 50, meg uh, about 50 gigawatts, uh, excluding wind, because many of these CPC contractors are, are common to both technology. So we increase the, the challenge. And another challenge we have to face, not only to secure the main equipment, but also to be on top of our main suppliers in, in order not to have the uh, delays in, in, in the deliveries of our main equipment. Related to what was mentioned in the previous slide, um, delving a little deeper into the problem that may arise due to the bull permitting, today we see that another of the determining factor are the subcontractors. Those companies contracted by the EPC contractors that have a lot of experience and qualified personnel. If these companies are not able to cover all the demand, we know that new subcontractors with, with little speciali specialization in renewable energies will appear. And therefore, the deadline and quality of the project could be compromised. Some, something similar happens uh, with the suppliers of the main equipment, since the production capacity is what it is. And if, dem if, the, demand, if the demand increase, new, new players will appear from all over the world. 
which will increase the risk and uncertainty for the price in the long term. And this is something that we are seeing in some tenders. Obviously, all this will also affect the price and we will see how the most reputable EPC contractor and supplier will be surprised with requests from promoters or developers. The only way to mitigate this risk is to try to establish a long-term relationship treating your main suppliers or EPC contractor as partners and involving them from the beginning with very fluid communication and full transparency of information. And we're going to comment on the supply chain constraints for project in Spain during the, the period ahead. In this respect, is my suggestion is not to lose focus on quality and sustainability on the supply chain, because it's the main drivers that the, will affect uh, the long term uh, for the project. I say at the beginning uh, that uh, Spain has a great potential in renewable energies. But it is also true that we are still highly dependent on foreign countries. A clear example of this is the modules, which represent practically, practically half of the capex of our project, and on which we are totally dependent, in this case, mainly on China. On the other hand, ESG and forced labor requirements have increased at the request of all stakeholders. And nowadays, it's very common to request additional requirements from module supplies in this, in this regard. And we do so, at least at Aquila. The price, of the, the price of the module, as I have already said, has an enormous impact uh, in the final capex of the project. And despite the volatility that has arisen in recent times, it seems that today it is beginning to stabilize at a more reasonable price than those seen in recent years. In principle, there not, do not seem to be any problems with availability from main suppliers in the short term. And we continue with inverters. Perhaps one of the equipment that has been giving us procurement department the most headache uh, lately. Currently, there are problems with the availability of the chain inverter, on which we are highly dependent on China too. The central inverter has delivery time that I have never seen before, and it's necessary to plan its, pur its purchase months in advance to avoid delays in the projects. And although Spain has several of the world's largest inverter manufacturers, their capacity is not enough to meet uh, the, uh, the demand. Uh, they have worldwide. And we are seeing how many local manufacturers have their preference in other markets, such as Australia, UK, United States, uh, US, uh, due to their greater willingness to pay a higher price for these products. Regarding price, they have been rising lately and the trend is not expected to, to change due to the demand. Regarding structures, except for the rights uh, in a steel price last year, uh, which increased the cost of this equipment because of, of the war in Ukraine, uh, the supply remains uh, stable. In Spain, we have large uh, manufacturers of structures uh, that to supply all over the world with proven quality and service. Perhaps uh, the biggest challenge for, for, for them is that the terrain that we are finding right now in our projects is becoming more complex. Um, perhaps maybe the, the added value will be during the design uh, phase and the optimization of their own equipment to match uh, the project needs. But then if uh, inverters are giving us a headache, transformers are, are the real nightmare. The lead times are extremely long and mean that the, we must make the purchase decision before we have the permits for the project in most of the case, taking on additional risk on our side. In addition, in many cases, we even share the infrastructure with the other promoters or developers, which means that we have to bring all parties together to make the purchase. So we need to understand each other. It's not an easy task. The demand is not only due to the current situation in Spain, it's an endemic problem at a, glo at a global level, and the factory cannot match the demand. And in many cases, uh, developers and promoters go to less reputable suppliers. Price remain at, a le at uh, high levels, and not much variation is expected in this regard due, the, due to the high demand. 
And last but not least, it's the uh, everything related to the ESG. This, I guess, is quite important in our day at day. And doing things the proper way is our way to do things. And that is why it is very important, especially at the time when there are, there are tensions uh, in the supply chain. And we need to have a focus into the sustainability and to have full control of what happens down the street in order to ensure product quality, protect the environment, ensure the welfare of our workers to avoid unwanted surprise. Especially, especially this stage where many of you will be experimenting with new contractors and suppliers. And that's all. Thank you very much uh, for your attention. And thank you, Solarby, for inviting me to this webinar.